Alrighty guys, welcome back to another one. In today's video, we're going to do a breakdown on Remington Slugger, which is just their foster slug. In 16 gauge, this is a 2 and 3 quarter inch, 4 fifth ounce slug, which is .80 on the scale. So, not a very heavy slug, but also not, you know, ridiculously light for the gauge either. I would like to see a 1 ounce 16 gauge slug because you can easily get those to 1600 FPS, just like with a 12 gauge. But still, 4 fifth ounce, that's not that bad either. 7 eighth ounce would have been a good payload for this too. But anyway, snooze and drink combo of the day is Canada Dry Zero Sugar Ginger Ale and Yotaborg's Rapia Lingen, which is lingonberry flavor. And we have Cannon helping me out again today. I can't get her. So, with that useless nonsense out of the way, here's what the box looks like. We have our specs. Once again, 16 gauge, two and three quarter inch, four fifth ounce, rifled slug, hollow point, or hollow point rifled slug. But yeah, the other side of it, well, one of the other sides, is our caution about not shooting these in Damascus or twist barrels. Don't put these in shorter than two and three quarter inch chambers. Don't put 16 gauge in 10 gauge guns. Don't put 28 gauge shells in 16 gauge. Once again, that all leads back to the whole 20 gauge and a 12 gauge thing not a good idea but yeah that is the other side of the first side of the box i showed you yeah if you want to read anything or check out any part of the box just pause it but all in all pretty typical remington green and yellow slug box here and yeah guys they do still make these although i have not seen them in quite a while this box is a little bit older as you can probably tell from the shell, it is a little bit corroded in places, which is fine. Uh, I don't think these were stored in the absolute best place, but I don't know. These were donated to us by a viewer here locally. You can see our slug right there. It is a hollow point. But we have no rotting anywhere on the plastic. I'm not sure if that's rubbed off due to handling or what but yeah these do not have any writing on them at all we do have a pretty high brass steel it's not brass but steel head remington primer all pretty typical looks just like the 12 gauge version just a little bit smaller i'll try unrolling this rather than giving it a haircut and if you don't know what i mean by that just cutting the crimp off but yeah i'll try unrolling this but without further ado let's get into it well i did manage to unroll this although clearly it is not the prettiest of jobs that was the hardest shell i've ever unrolled remington nitro hulls or express have really thick plastic we do have minimal damage to the slug unfortunately but obviously this is not really salvageable so uh haircut it is can anyone say 16 gauge mini shell because that's what's going to happen to that but the slug weighs 0 0.807 of an ounce which is a touch more than four fifth of an ounce but still that's a four fifth ounce slug all day long now underneath the slug we have some kind of buffer actually now that i look at it that is straight up remington's buffer it's just clumped together in a few pieces. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I did not expect to see that. Winchester actually does something similar with their 410 slugs. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Now underneath the buffer, we have a 3 8 inch nitro card, which that was expected. That is very typical of foster slugs. Yeah, 3 8 inch nitro card. Underneath the nitro card, where'd it go? There it is. We have a plastic gas seal. This one is blue, just like their 16 gauge wads are, the SP16 and the R16. That's pretty cool. So yeah, we have a 4 fifth ounce slug. Let's see what this stuff in here weighs. But as you can see, before we weigh it, it is, focus, come on. Anyway, it's more of that black flake powder. There you go, now you can see it. Turns out, 32.6 of that black flake powder. That's quite a hefty charge for a 16 gauge. I didn't expect it to be that high. 
And as is typical for Remington slug and buckshot shells, we have a somewhat tall plastic base wad. The primer is below the base wad, that's why it's a low base wad. And a straight wall shell. As you can see, Remington Express Hulls or Long Range Express, Express Long Range, Nitro, whatever you want to call them, they do have really thick plastic. So I'm going to throw this back together and I can promise you it's going to look a lot cooler than what it started off as. Namely, we won't have any more of that corrosion. And here's what it looks like now. There is sort of a problem here, not really a problem, but the gas seal and the nitro card appear to be a little bit undersized for this Shadat haul. So we do have the buffer leaking into the powder just a little bit. That's fine. It's not going to affect anything, but here it is in a clear haul. Like I said, it's a Shadat. If you're wondering, no, brass hot does not matter at all. It is completely cosmetic. I rolled it with a Got BN2. You can see the damage to the slug I did with the screwdriver when I was unrolling it. But to me, this looks a lot cooler than in a green haul. But guys, that is Remington's 16 gauge slugger, two and three quarter inch, four fifth ounce. These are rated at 1600 FPS. The new boxes say it, the old ones do not. But uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.